Hello everyone, hope you're all keeping well. This is going to be a video just showing you the up-to-date settings for New World Eternum. Players seems to be coming back and a lot of new people seem to be picking up the game. I know a few of my friends who've picked it up on console as well. So I wanted to just do an updated settings guide. Obviously, there's going to be involve some Windows and NVIDIA settings as well. Obviously, they're predominantly for PC people, but obviously the in-game settings, if you're a console player, that will be timestamped. Just feel free to skip straight to the final section of the video and don't bother with all of this stuff. But if you're on PC and you want to optimize it a little bit to still make the game look good, I don't just turn everything to low. If you haven't seen one of my videos in the past, you'll know that. Or if you have, sorry, you'll know that. I tend to still try and make things look as nice as possible and just turn off any sort of unrelated stuff that takes up a lot of processing power on the PC. Quick little tip though, if you are wanting to play New World on a PC, then I highly recommend you install it into an SSD, not a not a hard drive. So if you're not sure which one of your drives is an SSD, or you might only have one drive, or you might not be sure, if you click Control shift escape when you're on the desktop here, this will bring up your task manager, right? If you come down to this second option here, it'll, the performance tab, you can see there it's a CPU, memory, disk, disk one, ethernet, GPU, right? So this is my main disk, my C drive. You know, when you go into File Explorer, most of your games will, or most of your paths will start C drive. This is an SSD. This is what I have New World installed on. This other disk I have here is just a external USB drive that I use for recording videos. Like that's all, that's all it's there for. You tend to tend to find running games on SSDs works better in general, quicker load times, things like that, but because New World is so CPU intensive, trying to run it on a normal hard drive that is also installed on the PC can be quite a bit of a struggle. So my genuine recommendation is make sure you have it installed on an SSD. That is probably the biggest improvement you'll find compared to everything else I'm going to show you. Everything else will still optimize it, don't get me wrong, but running it on an SSD seems to be the most noticeable difference. So I just thought I'd get, the, get that in there at the start of the video just so you can uh, see exactly how to check how it's fully installed, right? So I'll close that down. Uh, the first thing we're gonna do is just go to our Windows key and click settings. And what you wanna do is go to gaming. First off, we wanna make sure a game bar is turned off. This adds a lot of processing power and takes up a lot of resources on the PC and it's just not really needed. Game mode, we wanna make sure that is turned on because it now, it never used to, but now it actually does help the PC. Underneath either one of them settings, you'll see something here called related settings, which uh, you can click on, which is graphics. And what you want to make sure is your optimization for Windows games is on. And then your hardware accelerated GPU scheduling is also turned on. I do believe one of these will make sure you restart your PC when you turn it on as well. So just bear that in mind. Scroll down here uh, underneath that and look for New World. Click on it and just make sure the GPU preference is set to high performance. Sometimes when you have it on let Windows decide, it still says in brackets it will be high performance, but I just don't like to take my chances and I just like to make sure it's always set to high performance. If for whatever reason, don't scroll near it either for some reason, if for whatever reason you can't find New World, if you just click add desktop app and then go to again, whatever drive you found that New World was installed on, find your program files x86, go down to Steam, Go to Steam Apps, go to Common, go to New World, go to Bin64, and then click New World and add it. And it will then appear for you. Nice and easy. Next, you want to do is you want to go back to that folder we were actually just in. And if you can't remember and you've already closed it down, don't worry. Just open up Steam and find New World. Right click on it, click Manage, and click Browse Local Files. It'll take you straight here. So, what you want to do is go back into that Bin64 folder. Right click on New World, click on Properties, go to Compatibility and click Disable Full Screen Optimization and then click Change High DPI Settings and then tick the High DPI Scaling Override button and leave it on Application as well. And you click Apply and you click OK and you're good. Come back to New World and just do it on the New World Launcher as well just to make sure. Again, just Disable Full Screen Optimization, Change High DPI Settings, Application, Apply, OK. Okay, once we close all that down again, you're going to be back on your desktop and just click your Windows and the R key. This will activate the run application. You're going to type in the run application system.cpl, so S-Y-S-C-P-L. Click enter and you want to then click over to advanced and under where it says performance, you're going to click settings. Under visual effects, click custom 
And if you just deactivate everything except for the four that I still have ticked, you will hardly notice any difference to your Windows 11, but it will make it run so much quicker. This isn't just for the new world, this is just for everything. Again, you could turn all of these off to save maximum resources, but as I said at the start of the video, I still want your PC and games to still look nice and still be enjoyable when you're using them. So I found these four were the best. You could probably even turn off save taskbar thumbnail previews, to be honest, but I just left it on. It it's not really caused me any issues, but everything else is kind of just very minuscule, not really noticeable, and it's not going to, but it takes up a lot of resources, right? So anyway, when you've done that, click apply and click OK. Uh, sorry, and then come back onto it and underneath performance options again, sorry, you want to go to advanced as well. And you're going to, underneath where it says virtual memory, you're going to click change. And in your C drive again, with, or whichever drive you have New World installed on, you're going to click custom size and for the initial size regardless of your pc or anything like that you're going to type in 1361 now the maximum size is going to depend on how much ram you have and if you're not sure how much ram you have you can click windows and you can type in system information this will bring up this really large box here and all you're just going to quickly do is look for the installed physical memory ram which is 32 gigabytes in my instance so we'll close that off we don't need that Open up your calculator and take your initial installed physical RAM, which from me was 32, and then multiply it by 1024. This gives us our RAM in, in megabytes, megabits, megabytes, however you pronounce it. And then all you're going to do is divide that by two, which will give you, or if you have 32 gigabytes, it will give you 16384. Set whatever this number is after you divide it by two to the maximum size and then you want to click set okay and then you're going to click okay and then again i believe if you've changed it it might also ask you to restart the pc there as well another thing here back on the desktop now you're going to click windows r again and you're going to type in ms config which is ms c o n f i g under system configuration you're going to go over to boot and then you're going to go to advanced options and then tick the box next to where it says number of processors and then you're going to just choose the maximum amount of processors. This just makes sure is this makes sure your PC in the boot state when it's booting up is activating all processors on your CPU and keeps them running. Again, click apply, click OK. It'll probably ask you to restart. Obviously, I haven't changed anything, so I'm not going to, but it might ask you to restart again. Now, this is obviously this next part is for people who use nvidia graphics cards so if you're like me then this bit's going to be for you first thing you want to do is just make sure your nvidia driver is up to date so we're just going to type in nvidia app if you don't have it just go on google and download the latest nvidia app and then just go on to drivers and it'll say here the newest one which was released tuesday august up it's literally telling me i have an update to do so i'll do that after i've finished recording this but just you know, make sure the driver is up to date. Come down to settings and make sure the... Is it still in settings or has it changed? Features, maybe. Maybe it's in system. Hang on, let me tap this. Out. You can come over to performance here and maximize your voltage maximum and your power maximum as well. I just put these all the way to the top and left the fan speed at automatic. Just kind of like does like a mini overclock, I think. And then you can just see your power and output and stuff like that. But, but I have a 50 series, so I don't really need to do it but i just you can just drag these up as much as you can this is what i was looking for enable and open overlay you want to make sure the overlay is turned off so if you click on it it'll click alt z and overlay it i would just make sure it is turned off which is in systems which is this one here overlay and just turn the overlay off because again it just adds more processes and it's going to be even if you're not using the overlay when you're playing the game it's going to be still running kind of in the background so again, I just make sure to turn it off. And again, you can come over to graphics here and you can click on global settings. This is the same as right clicking and going on NVIDIA control panel as well. It's just all now done in the app. So if you want to look through these settings super quick, yeah, these are just my main ones that I kind of just have. In fact, you should have low latency mode on, by the way, actually. But image scaling, max frame rate, you just turn these off, off. RTX dynamic vibrance just again off just useless stuff this have actors off and all that kind of stuff so you can turn these off or you can again go into your NVIDIA control panel I'll just show you them in there as well because I think there's a couple more 
again, I, I'm not going to sit and read through them all if you would just pause. But just make sure where it says adjust image settings with preview, you click on use advanced 3D image settings. Then you can click take me there or manage 3D settings on the left. And then you just, again, just if you want to take a screenshot, I'll just pause or however you want to do it. That That's the first page. Down to multi-frame sampled AA. And then if I come back down to the second half, you can see there just things like prefer maximum performance, highest available refresh rate, share the cache size, mine set to 10 gig. There was something happening when I got this PC where 100 gig was like doing something weird and like unlimited and stuff. It was just, if you went over 10, it was weird. I don't know exactly why it was being like that, but I set mine to 10. It might, whatever the issue was, I can't remember exactly off the top of my head, but it was, it might have been fixed now, but I've not had any issues running this at 10. So it, just stays on 10 it's fine but yeah just again all this stuff here just pause it and whatever do whatever you want and then you're you're good to go on your nvidia settings right and now for everyone so this includes the console players we're going to get onto the in-game settings now so you just want to open up new world quickly so here we are now in game and you're just going to click your escape or your pause button whatever you're doing on on console and go over to game menu and just come over to settings so i'll run through as anything i really need to feel like it's quite noticeable but in the game setting there's a couple of, in the game settings there is a couple of things to change here as well personally i turn camera shake off don't know i don't know if it changes too much of the performance i personally just don't like it if you scroll down i'll like i'm i'm only going to talk about the stuff that really affects this so if you come down to your bandwidth mode and make sure it's set to high and then a client telemetry data just turn it off because all it's doing is sending data in the background to, to like the Amazon game servers and honestly if if you're struggling with like network issues and literally as it says it there if you're experiencing network issues while playing changing the setting to off may help so I just personally leave it off and um, but then enable the icons just to know if anything is going wrong and it pops up so scrolling down to the video section here for windowed mode you're just going to leave it on full screen there's only full screen or windowed there's not like a borderless full screen or anything like that so just leave it on full screen you can still move your wind your mouse straight off the page without it monitor obviously just set that to monitor whatever monitor it is monitor one in my instance and then resolution just make sure it's set to the native resolution of your monitor because for some reason when i re-downloaded this game the other day and relaunched it on the new pc it was like automatically setting my resolution to 1920 by 1080 and everything looks so blurry because obviously it was stretched on a 4k monitor and i was like what well, that's weird uh, for maximum fps now this can either be set to your native resolution of the of your monitor which in my instance is 144 or if you just want to completely go for it you can just put it on uncapped personally i found putting it on 144 because i have a 4k monitor just helps steady it a little bit better but if you're on anything 2k and under i would just literally put it on uncapped and just go to town with it nvidia dls frame generation is for 40 series and over personally i haven't tested it too much because this setting wasn't here last time i done one of these it's not something i'm really gonna try that much i think i i used it in Thorn and liberty it was really good but then in other games it's not been as good so i've left it off i haven't personally tested it but i don't think it would be that much better uh, the nvidia reflex low latency again i would just turn that on and if you're if you're really struggling or if there's a really bad delay then put on plus boost uh, field of view i mean that's personal preference i just have mine set to 70 and then the crux of all of this is going to be your video quality now you're going to set this to custom and we're going to change a couple things around here now i did just change these before and for some reason when i've rebooted the game now it's set everything back to very high so i need to figure out why that is but I'm just going to go through everything super quick. So for effect details and lighting details, we're going to set them to low. Object details, I would just, depending on your graphics card, you could leave it on high maybe. But if you've got like a really old graphics card, then probably turn it to medium. The post processing details, we're going to drop down to low. Shadow details as well, low. And terrain details, probably again, high or medium, depending on your, your graphics card. Texture details, again, high or medium, depending on the graphics card. But water details will go low, and then show emote effects will be turned off. V-Sync, also, we just turn this off. But I do leave cap FPS in the background on. And then you can have show FPS on, but that most games will just put a little number in your corner. with It puts all of this information. So if you don't mind having all this really small writing at the top of your screen, then 
you can leave it on. I'm getting 110 at the minute, but I don't know if that's done what it's meant to. It shouldn't have... Uh, if I change these to medium... And it might come a bit, but... You see there, it hasn't... It's gone up by, like, 1 FPS, so... These things actually, like, make the game look so much better, but then don't really have a high impact on the fps and i am i am literally right outside of settlement as well so to get 110 sort of just outside of settlement's not too bad because i just don't like all the writing in the top corner so yeah that's kind of just personal preference the audio social tabs are kind of there's nothing in here that really changes anything too much accessibility again this is all just personal preference you can turn maybe turning down the text size might help improve some performance in, in little things but I, I, I wouldn't, nothing's going to really, really going to change it too much about stuff like that. And it's just things, but yeah, I'll give you a little in-game tip. For some reason on mouse and keyboard, the swap weapon button by default doesn't have a key bind. So instead of clicking one and two, I just change it to mouse five. That's just, again, a little bit tip. It's a tip bit. It's not really anything to do with the video, but anyway, that's the video. I hope you liked it. If there was anything else that you've maybe tried that helped you out a little bit, then please feel free to drop a comment below. And if you did if you did get anything out of this video, then please just leave a like because it helps push the video out to more people so then more people can see it and more people can get help. So yeah, until the next one, take care and bye-bye.